uh, this video is about blood flow to the head and neck. So we are in chapter 23. We are talking about blood flow. We left off with talking about circulatory routes and kind of a general overview on pulmonary and systemic circulation. So now we're going to focus on systemic circulation and getting blood to different regions in the body. We're going to start with the head and neck. Um, so if we take a broad overview, uh, here is an overview of systemic arteries. And as you can see, um, systemic arteries are basically carrying blood. They're the highways along which oxygenated blood runs from the heart to different regions. And we name these arteries based on where they're going um, and with similar conventions that we've done thus far with bone and muscle and, and regions of general anatomical regions. Okay, so some of this should be easy for you to figure out. Okay, so if we take a look at systemic arteries uh, overall, and if we kind of remember how we leave the heart, we would be starting in the left ventricle. If we're carrying oxygen-rich blood, left ventricle goes through the, which valve is it going through? Aortic semilunar, good, and into the aorta. So again, I'm going to review what we mean. I'm gonna use a yellow. Um, what, what we mean when we're talking about different regions in the aorta. So in the aorta, we leave through, we leave the left ventricle through that aortic semilunar valve and we end up right over here in the ascending aorta. And then we go up through the aortic arch and we're going to talk about branches of the aortic arch. And then it kind of wraps around behind the heart and goes down into the rest of the body. And that is what we call the descending aorta. Okay, so we're either going, so with the aortic arch, as you can see right here, we're going to supply these regions of the body. And that's what we're going to focus on today uh, in this video, actually. And then if we take a look at um, systemic veins, you can see basically you have the same veins running alongside those arteries, bringing blood back to the heart. Uh, one thing we should note is that veins are a lot more variable than arteries. Um, so you have a lot more veins than you do arteries, and you see more variability in veins than you do arteries across individuals. So if you guys were doing the cadavers right now, if you were taking a look at cadavers, you may or may not see um, variation in these named veins. But really the general thing, the, the most important thing when you're in a clinical setting is to realize where blood is coming from and what you would call that vein based on where it's coming from okay so if it's coming from the upper body right let's say it's coming from the upper arm draining blood from the upper limbs you would call that the brachial vein right and there's a lot more variability in veins than there are arteries so uh really quick actually before we get into this i want you guys to see no, I don't want to keep my ink annotations. I want y'all to see what I made for you. Uh, so I made a flow chart right here as a representation, just kind of like a visual representation of blood flow to the head and the brain. And then I made one with venous drainage. I will try to make one for each of the regions of the body so that you guys have kind of a conceptual view. So uh, one thing we should know in looking at these things is in the one that uh, is called venous, venous drainage, you're starting on the left side of the slide and you are draining blood from the brain um, right over here. Okay, right over here, you're draining blood from the vein and you should, from the brain, and you should already know how we drain blood from the brain. We talked about sinuses. We talked about dural venous sinuses um, way back when we looked at the chapter on the brain. Can't remember which chapter that was. And we talked about how we drain um, blood through the brain. And then it basically travels 
back, we're going in back into a general direction into the right atrium. Um, so what you see when you look at venous drainage is you have, you start, you're starting out with many veins and they're all kind of slowly converging until they all converge into this one major vessel for the purpose of this lecture. This is the vessel that we're draining into and eventually into the right atrium. This is how we bring deoxygenated blood back from systemic circulation into the right atrium so that we can put it into pulmonary circulation. So with venous drainage, you see convergence, whereas with arterial blood flow, what you start to see is divergence. Okay, we start in the left, ah, I flipped it, dang. Okay, we start in the left ventricle because um, that is where we have gathered all of our oxygen-rich blood ready to be pumped out to the body. And then we, how we're ending this lecture on arterial blood flow to the brain and the head is with the circle of Willis. So you'll see divergence, but then the only reason why you see this convergence right here is because that's where we're ending for this lecture. Okay, so I made those, I put up PDF versions on your uh, chapter module, and I hope this helps you. If it does help you, please let me know. Um, this should help you kind of visualize blood flow and which arteries and veins that we're going to focus on, because there are a shit ton of them that we're not going to talk about for the sake of this lecture. Okay, so if we go back to our slide, um, <clears throat> we start in the uh, uh, aortic arch. So we're going to focus on the aortic arch right here. And that is where you have the major splits of arteries that take you to different regions of the, um, the head and neck. Okay, so if my toolbar would go away, then I could make this full screen. Oh, dang it. Okay, bear with me. All right, so if we go here, all we did was take the heart out and we have the aortic arch right over here. Okay, and the aortic arch is going to split into three branches. It's going to split into the brachiocephalic trunk or brachiocephalic artery. I just call it the brachiocephalic artery. Uh, on the right side, and then on the left side, you have the um, <clears throat> you have the left common carotid and the left subclavian. Okay, so those are the three branches of the aortic arch. Now, what's happening here? You may be like kind of scratching your head a little bit. Is that we are also supplying the right side of the upper limbs and the head with those same arteries that we have on the left side. On the right side, we have the right common carotid and the right subclavian artery, which branch off from the brachiocephalic trunk. So what's happening here, as you can see in the figure, is that the aortic arch kind of goes over to the left. So you don't really need that branch you don't really need this branch on the left side. So the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side is so that it helps jog over to the right side of the body so that you can then split off into the right common carotid and right subclavian. The right common carotid, uh, I think the term carotid comes from uh, Greek root, of something like putting to sleep or a stupor and that's because that's the artery that you can that you know when you're kids and you go like this to each other and you actually pass out all right so don't do not try this at home do not try this with your children for those of you educating your children at home okay um, but that's where the term carotid comes from and then the subclavian artery is going to travel under the clavicle, which is why it has its name subclavian, okay? So three arches of the ascending aorta, okay? And just since we're here, once it wraps around and behind the heart and 
dives down into the uh, thorax, then we call it the descending aorta and we name it for each body region that it happens to sit in, but it is the same vessel, okay? So here you have the descending uh, thoracic aorta. Once it passes through the diaphragm, then we call it the descending abdominal aorta, okay? And we'll talk about branches to the uh, abdominal region in the next lecture. Okay, so getting blood to the head and neck. Um, if we go, if we go right here, okay, so this is just a right view. It's going to be once you're here, once you're at this branch, it's the same on the left side. So on the right side, the only difference is that we have, we have the brachiocephalic artery, and that's just to jog you over to the right side of the body. Okay, so we have the, uh, let's start here with the right common carotid. And you should, something should tell you by now that because we call it a common carotid artery, it's going to split into two branches. Okay, so just like a highway, right? If you have a major interstate highway, you can think of it as your common arteries. We common iliac, right? We call them common because eventually they're going to split and supply oxygen-rich blood to different regions, okay? So the common carotid artery is going to split into the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery right there, okay? The external, from its name, you guessed correctly, is going to supply blood to the skull and face, and we don't really get into details on that, whereas the internal carotid artery is going to go into the brain through the yep, carotid canal. All right, so that's going to supply uh, most of the oxygenated blood to the brain. The other branch of uh, oxygenated blood to the brain comes from a branch off of the subclavian. So if we go back here, so we went from common carotid to internal and external carotid. The external carotid is going to supply the skull and the face. We don't really get into detail about that. The internal carotid is going to go through the carotid canal and supply oxygen-rich blood to the brain. The uh, exter, I'm sorry, then we go back to the subclavian artery and one of the branches of the subclavian artery is this guy right over here, and that is the vertebral artery. So the vertebral artery supplies about 25% of the blood to the brain. The rest of the 25% is supplied by the internal carotid artery, and you can see that right over here. Okay, so um, what I'm showing you here is that your right and left vertebral arteries both merge into this artery called the basilar artery, and this is kind of where we're going to end. You can take this as blood supply to the brain. It's a really, really important structure, which we will talk about. Okay, so I'll just walk you through this figure um, since we started there and how to actually use this figure. So. We start in the left ventricle, we go into the ascending aorta, through the aortic arch, and then the descending aorta. Okay, I just want you to realize we talked about branches of the ascending aorta already. That was the left and coronary, the left and right coronary arteries, which supply blood to the heart itself. You can go back and review that in chapter 22. Okay, and then the branches that we just talked about from the aortic arch are these three branches. So we have the brachiocephalic artery, the left subclavian artery, and the left common carotid artery. The brachiocephalic divides into the right common carotid and right subclavian, whereas we already have those on the left side. And then the right common carotid is going to branch into the external and internal carotid on each side, okay? Don't assume that nothing is happening here. 
right? We are supplying many, many, many branches with the external carotid. We're going to external structures. We're just not getting into it here. And then the internal carotid, uh, we're going to follow it into the brain. Okay, so I hope that's clear. I hope this helps you guys track blood flow. Go there. Okay, so when we get to the, um, from the subclavian, we go to the vertebral arteries and they pass through these structures along the cervical vertebrae, those holes, the transverse foramina, if you remember way, way back from your chapter on bones, and it goes up into the skull through the what? What? Yeah, foramen magnum, right? So that's where we get 75, I'm going to use yellow, 75% goes through here and the remaining 25% goes through here. So if we flip the brain and look at a uh, inferior view of the brain, you see the vertebral arteries right and left side have come up through the foramen magnum and then they merge into this artery and it runs right along in the cleavage of the pons, right? And so it goes, they merge, and then it goes into this structure right here, whereas your internal uh, carotid arteries are coming up through the carotid canal, and they're all merging into this structure called the cerebral arterial circle, or, uh, in phys, we call it the circle of Willis, and it's a really, really important structure because as we talked about earlier, we talked about collateral circulation. I can't remember if I'd mentioned the word collateral circulation, but we did mention anastomoses, right, where you have multiple ways that you can supply the same region with oxygen-rich blood, and this is one of those structures that, like, let's say you had um, blockage over here or blockage over here. You can have blood running through collateral circulation to still supply different regions of the brain. Okay, so blood flow to the brain. And, okay, and then we want to talk about bringing blood back to the brain. So if we look at this figure right here, we end it right here. <clears throat> Um, it's the same on right and left side, and we ended right here. Okay, we're going to start venous drainage from our structures called our venous sinuses or dural venous sinuses. And those are kind of like modified veins. They don't have valves, and they just function to drain blood from the veins from the brain. Excuse me. Long day. Okay, so if we look at venous drainage of the brain, y'all remember this, right? We had our, um, our superior sagittal sinus and our inferior sagittal sinus running in that dural septum. Do you remember what it's called? Review for the final. Falx cerebri, right? That was that dip with the periosteal and meningeal layer of the dura matter. And it dips in between the two hemispheres of the brain and you get this space for uh, venous drainage. So you have the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus. The inferior sagittal sinus is going to connect to this area right here. This area right here is what we call the confluence of sinuses. You can't see it here, but if you go back to that chapter on um, the brain, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it was, um, but the confluence of sinuses is right here, and that's basically where you have all of the uh, dural venous sinuses converging. So you have the straight sinus, which also converges with the great cardiac sinus. You don't need to know that. I'm sorry, the great cardiac vein. You don't, not the great cardiac vein. Sorry, the great cerebral vein. 
Sorry about it. I'm not going to re-record that. This is what you got. All right. So confluence of sinuses, it also converges with the transverse sinus. Okay, you have a right and left transverse sinus, and then the one that you can't see that's labeled right here is the occipital sinus. So everything's meeting at the confluence of sinuses and then running into the transverse sinus and then dumping into this S-shaped or sigmoid sinus. And then eventually you end up in the internal jugular vein, which exits the skull through the jugular foramina. Cool. So internal jugular vein is draining blood from the internal structures of the heart, if there, gah, of the brain. So if there's an internal jugular vein, you guessed it, there's an external jugular vein. Okay, we don't really talk too much about the vertebral vein right here. Um, the vertebral vein, as you can see, it's in the same place as the vertebral artery, so you can call it a companion vessel to the vertebral artery. It's going to run along the uh, transverse foramen of the cervical vertebrae, okay? And then you have, it's going to dump into the, uh, over here, the brachiocephalic vein. Whereas, if we're talking about the external jugular vein, this guy right here, which is draining blood from the skull and external structures, it's dumping into the same vessel that you see right here, but it hasn't yet quite become the brachiocephalic vein. It's still the subclavian vein, okay? So once the internal and external external jugular and vertebral all are merged, then you are now in the right brachiocephalic. So the only one that's really truly dumping into the brachiocephalic is the internal jugular vein. Okay, and it's the same thing on the left side. Okay, so once you're in the right brachiocephalic vein, take a wild guess, you guessed it. So right brachiocephalic, left brachiocephalic are going to dump directly into the superior vena cava and into the right atrium. Yes? So you have three vessels dumping into the right atrium and one of them is the superior vena cava, one of them is the inferior vena cava, that's right here. We're going to talk about lower extremities in the next video. And then don't forget that there's the coronary sinus also dumping into the right atrium. So you're pooling all of your deoxygenated blood from all regions of the body, whether it's upper region, lower region, or the heart itself, so that you can send it to the lungs to get reoxygenated. Okay? And if you take a look at our venous drainage, that's what we just talked about. So you have your, um, your sinuses, okay, all dumping into the confluence of sinuses, which leads into right and left transverse sinuses, and then into the right and left sigmoid sinus, which then dumps into the internal jugular vein. So we talked about how the vertebral veins are going into the fudge stick. Okay, vertebral veins, sorry about that, that should go right here into the subclavian, and the subclavian then dumps into or becomes the brachiocephalic vein. Okay, and brachial right and left, brachiocephalic, converge into the superior vena cava, which then dumps into the right atrium. I didn't include uh, coronary sinus in there just because I didn't have room. Okay, so vertebral right and left vertebral veins are dumping into this should be brachiocephalic. Sorry about that. Did I do that right? Vertebral is dumping into the brachiocephalic. Okay, so just make sure you change that artery.
I mean that vein, this one right here, this should go that way. This one is correct. On the right side, it, it is correct. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, look out for the next video and that's it.